All right, let's rev up the engine for the new season of what I'm playing. As you might notice, today we are playing Grand Theft Auto V, which is a massive phenomenon. One of the biggest video games of all time in all kinds of degrees. We're talking sales, we're talking about critical reviews, we're talking about user reviews, we're talking about the size and scope of the game. There is a lot that Grand Theft Auto V offers, and I really enjoyed this whole ride of the game from the very first time I played it, which was the original launch of the PS3 version back in September of 2013. And funny enough, shortly after getting the game, my PlayStation 3 disk drive died out on me, and I ended up coming to a decision to, for the very first time ever, paying $60 for a digital copy of the game so I can continue playing because I didn't want to have to wait for repairs or buy a new console or anything like that. I just wanted to play my GTA 5, and I ended up selling the copy that I had to a co-worker at work. Um, this was a game that I just had to have, being a big fan of GTA ever since the very first GTA game I played back in the late 90s. There was a online service, I forget what the name of it is, but it was based out of the UK, and they allowed people to download certain games for free, and you had to watch like little advertisements before you could play the game. I forgot the name of the service, maybe somebody in the UK or whatever could tell me what that was but that's how I played the original Grand Theft Auto and it was a fun time of course you know it was a very unique concept compared to the games that I played from beforehand I had played open world base games before um, all the way back to like say Ultima on the PC I remember Ultima 6 was probably the first real open world game that I played that allowed me to <laughs> Uh, destroy Simeon's car deal, right? But no, it allowed me to explore the world, do quests in the order that I wanted to, or not even do quests at all, just kind of goof off and do my own thing. And that's always been an intriguing concept, but it's not a concept that had been explored much in console video games until the introduction of Grand Theft Auto 3, which was a massive success. I mean, this was a game that people weren't really talking about prior to it coming out, and then like the week after it came out, it was like a phenomenon. You know, once people realized just how nuts that game was, that you had the freedom to explore this, at the time, large city environment. You can literally drive any car that you saw. You can go around and beat up prostitutes and all this other crazy stuff. You were able to do seemingly everything you wanted in that game. But that game just ended up being kind of the base groundwork of what we have today in Grand Theft Auto V. With all of the new features and all of the new mechanics that we have, the much, much larger environments. We have the online play, of course, GTA Online, which is really popular. But I never really got into that. Uh, my discussion is about the single-player experience of Grand Theft Auto V. And that's why I want to take you guys on a trip here, because this game does a lot of things that people really don't appreciate and yet they do at the same time this game is both overhyped and underhyped if you can believe it because yeah i mean i get it you know a lot, a lot of people talk about grand theft auto like it's the second coming of video games it's not but at the same time it does so much right that you can't help but recognize the accomplishment and the achievements of everything that it does here. There is so much attention to detail. Even though this is a last generation game, it looks great on current gen hardware. It really does. And there is just so much going on about this game. So a lot of mechanics, like I said here, for example, there's these stealth mechanics, which you don't really have to use overall in the grand scheme of things, but it gives the player a lot of choice and agency in how they want to play the game 
play certain missions, for example, you can go in guns blazing, blast them up. That's what I like to do. But, I mean, if you're not that kind of person, if you want to sneak around and be a little more uh, methodical and careful about it, you totally can. This game totally offers you that ability to do so. And there's just so many ways to play Grand Theft Auto. There's no way that you can play the game the same as somebody else because there's so many ways to approach things and there's just so much to offer. Not to mention the dynamics of having three different playable characters that once you get to a certain point in the game, you can practically switch on a whim as long as you're not stuck in the middle of a mission, of course. And the game does a really brilliant way of transitioning between those characters. It zooms out of the map and then zooms in to where the other character is. And you see events happening while this is going on. You see the traffic on the road and you see things moving around. You see the transitions of the day and night as this goes on. And there is a lot of really interesting scenarios. Like, for example... The crazy, bald-headed hillbilly, Trevor, who is a knockout character, a phenomenal character, so nuts, so crazy, so enjoyable to see his antics. And you can see all kinds of crazy things, just transitioning to Trevor when you're switching from Michael or Franklin, which are the other characters, all excellent characters in their own right. But Trevor really is the embodiment of Grand Theft Auto, it's pretty much how you would imagine a character in this universe to be if they behaved like you as a player do going on rampages. That's Trevor in a nutshell. Trevor does not give a flying fuck. And, of course, this video isn't meant for kids, but Grand Theft Auto isn't either. Although there are a lot of kids that still play this game, which is kind of funny, you know. But it goes to show, you know, that... When it comes to content and everything like that, it's up to the parents to do what they want. If they want to be strict or they want to be more loose about that kind of stuff or not even pay attention at all to what the kids are doing because I see kids, you know, with obviously their parents or an older sibling or something like that buying Grand Theft Auto 5 on a regular basis. And it actually blows me away going back to Grand Theft Auto Vice City. I remember one time I was over at a friend's house, um, a female friend, on, mind you. Although, um, yeah. <laughs> so anyways, her, like, nephew or someone like that was downstairs playing a video game. And of course, I recognize it as Grand Theft Auto Vice City because I had been playing that game and it was awesome at the time. And I got a crack out of the fact that the kid was only five years old. And he was actually, like, pretty far into the game, you know, like, he already unlocked the other island and all this other stuff, you know, so it was just really interesting watching this kid playing this game, you know, and it's a game that, even though it has very dark content, the concept of the game is something that transcends all ages, because I guess for a kid it really unlocks the creativity that they have with video games. You know, the, the kid loves the fact that it's an open sandbox that they can do whatever they want. And that's kind of what we appreciated first as well. That's what I appreciated about Grand Theft Auto 3 and I guess to a lesser extent the original Grand Theft Auto. But let's be real here. Even though it was fun, the fact that it was a top-down perspective clearly was not showing its full potential you know like it was pretty much a top-down shooter that you were able to openly roam in you know otherwise it pretty much like played like almost every top-down shooter prior to that you know it really wasn't doing anything that interesting until we got of course to grand theft auto 3 and the series has had a lot of evolutions and a lot of revolutions uh, one revolution in particular of course is grand theft auto 4 this is a game that has been highly contested by the fan base. Um, but if you look at the reviews and whatnot, it is one of the highest rated games of all time. And it is really interesting to see that fact, and yet the opinions of that game have kind of soured for a lot of people at the same time. And there was a few reasons for that. It's because prior to that, we have San Andreas, of course, which 
at that time was the largest and most expansive Grand Theft Auto game. It added all kinds of new mechanics like being able to have RPG elements where you can buff up your character, make them stronger and faster or fatter or whatever you wanted to do, you know. And it had like those kinds of elements and you had the gang war system where you're able to conquer territories and all kinds of other stuff that was essentially stripped away. And we got a much smaller map, of course, in Grand Theft Auto 4 as well. I think it was maybe the size of Vice City in terms of landmass. So it was significantly smaller in scope than San Andreas. But they took a different approach with Grand Theft Auto 4. First of all, you know, the previous Grand Theft Auto games weren't necessarily the best looking games. Like, they looked competent. But when you compared them to some of the best-looking games on those platforms, they were kind of mediocre graphically, to be honest. But when you got to Grand Theft Auto 4, you got this huge, open, and expansive environment that was also some of the best that you were able to see. So much detail in everything. You know, the texture work and everything like that, of course, was excellent as expected. But at the same time, there was a lot of just little details that you didn't really see in video games prior to that point that were in that game it really felt like in a live city in uh gta 4 like it didn't feel like it was just a empty environment that was populated with assets you know it really felt like it was a city that had like a whole purpose to existing and that was something that was really interesting with that game and of course you added the social interactions, which they kind of dipped a little bit into in San Andreas with the relationships and whatnot. But they really expanded upon that greatly. And I think Grand Theft Auto 4 doesn't really get the credit that it deserves at the end of the day, you know. But then we, of course, get to Grand Theft Auto 5, which is basically the culmination of everything GTA up to that point. And, uh... Yeah, there's supposed to be some Genesis or Phil Collins or whatever playing here, but I had to mute it <laughs> for YouTube copyright reasons, obviously. So, this game took those established principles that we had in Grand Theft Auto 4, giving this this huge, lively world, but obviously going to this San Andreas element of huge open environments, exploration, all kinds of new mechanics, of course. Grand Theft Auto V does a lot really well. And that's not to just touch upon the fact that they really enhanced the gameplay prior to that. Because in the original games, you know, the original 3D games, you had this weird lock-on system. It didn't really actually play that good. Uh, going back, the games haven't aged very well gameplay-wise. And of course, Grand Theft Auto 4 does a lot better job with the gameplay aspects of it, but it still felt kind of rough. It still felt like a game that was stuck in time. When Grand Theft Auto 5 came out, however, it was a game that played beautifully. Uh, you know, the, the car physics, for example, it has this weird mesh of simulation and arcade type controls because the cars kind of handle a little more simulation-y for example um you know like you can't just turn on a dime you have like very f unique weight to the vehicles you know every vehicle handled differently and you really got a sense of that but at the same time you had some crazy arcade like physics where you can have huge car chases bashing through cars making huge jumps and doing all kinds of exciting things and it just worked out really well and then of course we bumped up the shooting mechanics which were just fantastic i mean grand theft auto 5 really offers it all and that's just a single player game like i said i didn't even touch on gta online which offers a lot more to that experience you know this is a game that you can get pretty much anything you want out of it and you know, for me, I just enjoy the single player. That's always been the way I played this game. Playing the story missions. Getting a really good crack out of those. Which, by the way, one thing that they really done well, that they didn't really do in previous GTA games. You want to replay story missions? You can replay them. You just go into the story mission and play it all over again. You can really enjoy a good time with that. 
I mean, our boat going down which in previous games you had to maintain older save what? files if you want to replay but missions yeah, and things stolen? like that so I, I it kind of forced to you to replay it. the game over and over so, whereas money, this you could just go back to an old mission at any time and you know enjoy the thrills all over again without having to play through the entire game or micromanage a bunch of save files you know so my really cool little element that they added to the I game there. And one. going back Don't to the switching of the three characters, the three characters are so well written. You know, I mean, this is basically like a huge... If Quentin Tarantino wrote a huge multi-season TV show, you know, that's what this kind of feels like. You know, this really has a gritty crime drama kind of feel. But at the same time, there is a certain panache with each of the characters. You know, you get the thrill of Michael, for example. He is the old man, stuck in his old ways, still living in the 80s. But the 80s were a great time. And you get to realize, just from the strength of Michael as a character, you know, like, everything that there is to experience in Grand Theft Auto, you know, he is a quintessential Grand Theft Auto character. Even though I say that Trevor, of course, is the embodiment of how players play the Grand Theft Auto games. Grand, Grand Auto games. Grand Theft Auto games. Michael is the embodiment of the Grand Theft Auto character. That's the ideal character archetype that you want to see in the storyline. And that's not, of course, to dismiss Franklin. Franklin is kind of like CJ from San Andreas, but we have a lot more personality and a lot more heart with this character. Because, I mean, CJ was a great character, of course, but you as a player were kind of like the mold for CJ, and you kind of shaped him how you wanted him to be. There wasn't a whole lot of dialogue, and then, of course, before that even, the characters that we had, like Tommy Versetti, they, they were kind of like open molds that you kind of played, but they really advanced the storyline and the character development of these games, and you really got a lot more out of these later games. That, of course, always... That also goes back to Grand Theft Auto 4, which did set that groundwork. But GTA 5 built on it beautifully. I really cannot wait to see what they're going to do with Grand Theft Auto 6, because where can Rockstar really go from here outside of obvious improvements that they can make to, say, gameplay or graphics or that kind of stuff? You know, that's stuff that you kind of expect to see going into a new generation of games. That's stuff that we're going to see, I'm sure, in a Grand Theft Auto 6. If, well, hell, if it comes out, knowing Rockstar, they might just re-port this game in, like, 4K 60 frames for the new generation or something like that, you know, and call it a day. It's possible, right? But uh, I really think that they have some big plans, and it's going to be really interesting to see what they do, because with most game series... You kind of get the same thing, but with some tweaks, and you get the obvious improvements. But Grand Theft Auto is a series that has done more to push the envelope than most mainstream games out there. And it's really not hard to see why it's so popular. It really is not. It's a game that just about any gamer can enjoy, regardless of what kind of games they normally play. I mean, even people that play, like, JRPGs or sport games almost exclusively, pretty much all of them I know play Grand Theft Auto, at least in some fashion, you know, whether they play just the online stuff, they just play through the story one time, or just goof off in the map or whatever, you know, everybody seems to have a good time with this series, so I'm really curious to see what you guys think about this whole franchise, this Grand Theft Auto series, and of course, specifically Grand Theft Auto 5, since that's technically the topic of the video, I guess, even though I rambled on about half the video talking about other Grand Theft Auto games. But it's just a series that really has came a long way and has evolved with gaming itself. But not just that, it's revolutionized gaming in many ways. 
more so than most games out there can even imagine doing. And I really could talk more about this game, but I kind of want to leave it up to you guys on this now. Let me know what you think about the Grand Theft Auto series, Grand Theft Auto 5, and so on. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And don't forget to check out next week's episodes. We're, we're going to be going to some angry alleyways and beat up some old bad guys. So we'll see you then. Thanks for checking out what I'm playing. Down Phoenix out. I want to head but the road in peace. Oh, great! Leave me with the home invader! I'll get it done, dog. No problem. Dad! Enough! Alright? Enough! Hey, Franklin, can you call me a cab? No problem! Hey, yeah, um, just come out here.